Welcome back everyone. We have an exciting episode this time, and I actually mean it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun because I'm going to start off by making a statement about conservation of energy and the law of it, and I'm going to say that is 100% correct, and by the end of the video I'm going to be seemingly saying that it's not true. So I suggest you like that at the beginning and not the end, because by the end you're probably going to be giving me dislikes, grabbing your pitchforks and your flames, and building a mob to come and get me. Now since this is largely about conservation of energy, uh, it is wise that you watch the original video, or part one, about conservation of energy. But this time we are actually going to talk about TEC efficiency. And we're going to deal continue to deal with the statement here that TECs are between 2 and 10% efficient. So, what is efficiency? Well, it's determined by the ratio of useful output to total input power. Okay, that's nicely worded, I guess. Uh, so that is ratio equals the output power divided by the input power. Okay, so due to the conservation of energy, O, or the output, can never be greater than I, which is the input. And so efficiency, R, is never going to be greater than 1. And that's a law. There we go. That's a statement. That's a fact. Unless, of course, you believe in a number of conspiracy theories. But that's not what this video is about, and we'll assume that that is a fact. Now, if we go back to what is efficiency, it's written determined by the ratio of useful output. Now, that raises a big question. What on earth is useful? And this is the interesting thing about efficiency. It's what you decide it to be. So, for a heater, if efficiency is generally the measure of input power versus output heat, if you're looking at light bulbs, is generally the ratio of input power versus light output. If you're talking about TECs, that's generally the ratio of input power versus the amount of uh, power slash heat moved. So let's look at a few examples, and we're going to get harder and harder. So, we have our heater, and you'll recognize this heater from the many videos I've done on this topic so far. This is a 1000 watt heater. In all my previous videos, I've made the statement that it's 100% efficient and all the input power comes out as heat. Now, that is not reality, but we wanted to keep things simple. So, if we have a heater, we plug it into the wall, you get a 1000 watts, or this number here, going into it. Now, thanks to conservation of energy, we know that a 1,000 watts has to come out. But how? Now, the reality is not all of it comes out as heat, because this heater has an exciting LED. Oh, yeah. Can you see it? It's, it's there. So some of the input power goes to power the light, and the rest of it goes to power the heat or dissipated as heat. So as a heater, you could say that it's not 100% efficient. So we're going to assume that that's a 1 watt light bulb, and so we've got the rest of it, or 999 watts of heat coming out. So this is our mathematical equation. You've got 999 watts of heat coming out, You've got a thousand watts going in, and so the ratio is 0 0.999, or in a more useful number, 999.9% efficient as a heater. Now, this has a light bulb, which I mentioned before, so therefore the output of light is one watt, the input is still a thousand watts. And so, as a light bulb, the ratio is 0.001, or 0.1%. So, that means if you're looking to light your home, you don't have a bunch of oil heaters strapped to your roof dangling down. 
you don't go out in the middle of the bush and take let's and say let's take the oil heater with us. No, you say let's take a light bulb. Now let's have a look at light bulbs. So a light bulb, or this light bulb, is 100 watts. So that means we're putting in 100 watts of energy here. And it means we're getting 100 watts of energy out. Now in this very inefficient incandescent light bulb, 2.6 watts of light is coming out of the light bulb. Yeah, for the 100 watts you're putting in. Or that becomes a ratio of 0 0.026 or 2.6% as a light bulb, which is not very good, really. Now, as we've spoken before, thanks to conservation of energy, we know if we're putting in 100 watts of electricity, we must be getting 100 watts of energy back out. So where does the rest go? Keeping things simple, it comes out as heat. So we have 97.4 watts of heat coming out. And so the mass is this. 97.4 watts coming out. There's 100 watts going in. The ratio is 0 0.974 or 97.4 percent efficient as a heater. Which, when you think about it, is pretty good as a heater. OK, let's move on to something more complicated. How about a TEC? When it comes to TEC efficiency, it's just about always defined like this. Efficiency is defined as the ratio of input energy to moved energy. Everyone I've ever talked to about TECs, when they start mentioning TEC efficiency, they're always talking about input power versus moved energy. So that's what we're going to define it for in this example. Now this is taken from my TEC calculator, which you can get from ultrasonic2.com, and we're using a 400 watt TEC, and we're applying 10% of its input voltage, which is 2.48 volts, and if we work out the electricity used in watts, that is going to draw 3.64 amps at 2.48 volts which is 9.02 watts. Now, it is able to move 79.46 watts. So over here we've got input power, so the watts used is 9 watts, and the watts moved is just under 80 watts. And if we do the maths, our output is 79.26 and our input is 9.02 and the ratio is 8.81 which is 881% or oh, question mark if we go back to conservation of energy it says due to a conservation of energy O or the output can never be greater than I the input and so efficiency R is never greater than 100%. Uh, but this is a lot more than 100%. I thought this was a law that couldn't be exceeded. And you're trying to tell me it's 881? Okay then. Well, let's look in, at an even more complicated example. Let's take a passively cooled computer. Now, efficiency is defined as the same as the ratio of input energy versus moved energy. OK. A passive cooler works by having a heat source, which is down here, the CPU. And it conducts the heat up a heat sink. and out into the environment, to the air. Now what makes it passive is that there is no fan on this. There's no active uh, input power or method of transferring the heat from the heat sink into the air. Now that is an interesting piece of math then, isn't it? So in this situation, 
we've got zero watts used because there's no input power being applied to our cooling method but it's able to cool a 68 watt or whatever heat source CPU so our math is this our output wattage is 68 divided by our input power which is zero and the ratio is in a big fat error or infinite this is infinitely efficient because you're using zero power but it's able to move 68 watts question marks piles of them back to conservation of energy due to the conservation of energy O or output can never be greater than I which is here but in this example just like the other one the output is much greater than O and so the efficiency R is never greater than a hundred percent but in this example it's infinitely efficient I do not understand error 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 well this needs some explanation doesn't it but we're not going to do that in this video we've just pro proposed the problem so I don't know if we've actually answered anything in this video and we've just created more questions than answers we need to know how this is possible how we can have an infinite efficiency while not breaking the law of conservation of energy So. Hopefully you, you're not reaching for your pitchforks, but I, you probably should be, because this doesn't make any sense, does it? Uh, so I will do another video on that. Don't forget to watch the previous ones. We have a forum, we have a shop, we have a Facebook page, and we obviously have a YouTube channel. They can all be accessed from ultrasonic2.com. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one. Uh, and we will see you on the next one. See you later. Bye.